In 2014, a crack toy fixer was banished from the forums for talking about repairing vintage toys. Undeterred, this man promptly set up his own YouTube channel, located in the Somerset Underground. Today, still wanted by hardcore Star Wars collectors, he survives as a maverick toy restorer. If you have a problem, if no one else can help, and if you can find him, maybe Toy Poloi can help you. Welcome to Toy Poloi. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Ploy. And in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at these vintage field radios for Action Man. Now, these are pretty unique things because they are actually little mini record players. I've been given uh, both of these by a friend of the channel, Simon, and neither of them work. So what we're going to have to do today is uh, take them apart, see if we can actually work out what's gone wrong with the little record players and get them working again. Hopefully I'll get one of them working, but uh, you know, never know. Maybe I can get both of these working. So let's take a closer look at them to uh, see what's wrong and see what we need to fix. So here we go, these are the Action Man field radios and they're pretty uh, unique little things as I say because they are miniature record players. I've got two, uh, neither of them work. One, if I shake it like this you can hear there's uh, something broken inside it and this one's got some other issues. Uh, I'm hoping that by uh, taking them apart we can work out at least how to get one of them working but you know you never know we might get both of these working. So let's take a look inside. On the back there is this panel which we've removed just by sliding it up and then you get to the sort of main gubbins of the uh, record player and field radio pull this little catch down and it opens up and inside you can see we've got a little compartment here it's supposed to be a battery goes in there and here is the little record it originally comes with uh, three records currently I've only got one of them and it didn't seem worth getting any of the others until I'd sort of actually managed to get one of them working but you can see this is a sort of clear yellow plastic record uh, I think there's a red one and a green one as well to get they are double sided so they've got tracks on both sides uh, and then inside this this is the little record player so there's a needle there uh, what's supposed to happen is you press the button on the front and it sort of activates it and sets it going. This one though, as I said, you can hear there's bits rattling around. I've put a, a, a battery in it and it doesn't work. We'll open up the other one and you can see what this one looks like. Again, we just remove the panel like that, push that little uh, tab down and it will open. This one looks a little bit sort of in better condition but I've uh, again put a battery in it and realised that uh, this uh, connector is broken so there's absolutely no way this one will work either so um, yeah we just need to start taking these apart and seeing if we can work out what is going on I can see there are two screws here which I think will remove this rear panel and then hidden under this uh, little sticker here there are more screws which I think uh, sort of releases the inner sort of uh, flesh coloured box uh, so um, we're going to have to sort of take these apart carefully this one as I say is rattling quite badly so um, yeah we'll see what goes on uh, this bit on the side is just for show it's just a sort of a pop-up aerial uh, most of this stuff is for show the only bits that are actually sort of electronic are this center section and there's a button on here so um, yeah we'll just uh, take them apart see what we can find out we'll start with this one which is the well it's not rattling but there is certainly some damage to this uh, little connector here I'm actually going to just remove that connector and then um, yeah, let's uh, undo a couple of screws and see what happens. So first thing is we'll undo these screws top and bottom on the back and let's see what this opens up. There's one. All right, and there's the other. So that has removed this rear panel and that allows us to get into not a lot more actually you can't actually see a huge amount more I think we need to undo these screws at the front so these are the ones that are under the sticker on this one it looks like someone's possibly had a go at uh, removing those so let's just undo that screw there it maybe I need to make replacement stickers for these and so just uh, it depends if we can get the rest of that sticker off so they're the same size screws I think if we soak that in a little bit of lighter fluid we might be able to loosen that up so let me get some lighter fluid and we'll see if we can loosen that up and then take the rest of this off does this button come away all right yeah the button comes off yeah so if we can get to that screw we will be able to take this out and have a proper look at it
I finally got that off in the end I did have to uh, sacrifice that sticker it just wasn't coming off I think it's just too old these toys are now what nearly 50 years old something like that so um yeah all of the uh, glue was pretty much dried out so I've just decided to uh, scrap that I will make new stickers for this towards the end of the project but um, that has allowed me to get inside here which is what I wanted so there's just two screws now to undo and then we'll see what's inside this one Okay, right. Well, it um, looks fairly simple. Uh, you know, at, at first glance, you think, oh, actually, that's quite complicated, but it's fairly simple. I think what is uh, missing is that contact here that was uh, sort of handmade needs to be replaced because there's a wire here that used to be soldered to whatever that contact was. So we need to remake that. And then you can see we've got a circuit where the electricity goes all the way around through the uh, motor at the end, round back here to the other end of the battery. We've got this little thing that moves left and right. There's a button on the other side inside the battery compartment. And I think that will control the speed of this motor because you can see here there is a very long coiled bit of wire. So the more uh, length of that wire you have for the, the electricity to go through, uh, the slower the motor will go. That's how I reckon that works. Um, and then we've got a few other pieces there's this button here which is the one that oh, I took the green button off on the outside when you press that that actually raises up the little speaker it's um, a not a very complicated speaker it's essentially just vibrating this uh, plate here so when you press that button it raises the speaker up and I'm guessing turns off the sound um, and then um, yeah that's the the little stylus there not quite sure what this piece of metal does here there's a bit of metal on the plate where the uh, record spins around and then there's this little contact that touches it not quite sure what that does so I think the first thing to do is actually make a replacement little uh, connector there to go with the battery I've got some uh, half millimeter copper sheet here so I'm going to cut something sort of copying roughly what is in the other one and I will make a new plate that fits onto that I think in the meantime though I can actually put this back together there doesn't seem to be anything much wrong with it it'll just hold all the pieces together so if I put that back together like that just to get everything lined up Make sure everything fits in place like so uh, then I can turn it over and we can have a look inside and see what this little uh, sort of contact needs to be it's a very simple shape as you can see and that's the button there that moves left and right and I think that is what controls the speed so yeah let me shape a bit of this copper I'm just going to cut it with a pair of scissors until I've got something that fits in that slot um, and then we can soldier it on see if we can get this actually working put the new contact in place and put the battery in and um, it does work but I'm sort of was trying to work out why it doesn't work when you sort of 
close everything up and I've taken the other one apart to uh, sort of fathom it out and I can see here that this little uh, piece of metal this uh, tiny thin bit of metal is bent out of shape if you look at this other one which is broken in many other different ways that little piece of metal is nice and straight and when you shut the uh, back of the container this little clip pushes down or pushes out of the way and that creates a contact between that post and the, the little bar. And so what's happened, this one is all bent out of shape. So I need to uh, rearrange that and reshape it. Because if I push this up into the correct position now, you'll hear everything start up. So you can see the motor is going around, everything is working. And if I move this little plate up here, it slows the motor down. If I move it to the other end, it speeds the motor up. So everything is working, it's just this little piece of metal is bent out of shape. So I'm going to very carefully try and reshape that and bend it without snapping it. And uh, we'll see if we can get that to work then. But um, you can see if I push it into the position, it is all going now. You can't hear the record, obviously, because the speaker is over here. But I think we're getting somewhere. So you can see I've now straightened that and it's looking a lot better. We can actually give this a quick test. I put a battery in. If I close this uh, back compartment now, it should move this little switch, uh, which means that that contact will then touch onto there. That will then start the record player up. Uh, and if I gently sort of press onto the needle, we'll see the needle move across the record. And as that gets to the inside of the record, it then moves that little bar back out of the way and it should switch the record off. And then uh, the only way to restart that will be pressing that button. So let's give that a quick go so if I press it you can see the motor starts up and then if I press onto the needle it should move across the record and as it gets to the middle it then moves that little bar again and switches everything off so that seems like it is working so I think uh, the next thing to do is just sort of roughly put this back together and see if it works at all see what the sort of speed is like and then uh, we'll go from there so to put it back together we've got the little diaphragm here that goes over the top then there is this uh, little spring piece with a bit of sponge inside that goes with the plastic bit pointing upwards. We then get the case and drop that over the top, making sure everything stays lined up and fits in all of the holes like so. And now we can test it. I can just sort of hold this all together and we should be able to hear it working if I close this back panel. Yeah, it does actually work. So if I press this button, that should uh, raise the needle and it resets everything. It will play the record again. It randomly picks a track. That seems to be how it works. If I press it, we will get a, a random amount of tracks. Yeah, so that is working, but it's running fast. So um, I think we can fix that quite easily just by changing the tension on this spring here. Uh, over the years, this spring will have got compressed a bit too much. So I reckon if we give this a bit of a pull and stretch it a bit, just to make it slightly sort of longer, not too much, that'll then put more pressure on the diaphragm. I think that will slow down the record. At least that's the, my thinking of it. So let's put that there. And again, let's put this back together. So if I carefully hold everything together now, hopefully when we play it, it will be a bit slower. Oh, it is much slower. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's about the right speed. So final things to do. I'm going to do a little bit of soldering. I can see that uh, one of these contacts has come away here and we need to solder on the uh, new little contact that I put here. So I'm going to get my soldering out. We'll fix everything up. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to do exactly the same to this other field radio that I have. And as you can see, I've already taken this to pieces and it has pretty much the same issues.
we can now go ahead and put this back together so it's just a case of reversing the process of taking it apart so this piece goes inside here this is the little button section and that needs to go through that hole in the middle so we just have to line that up and then we can replace the uh, two screws that go on either side so i'll just grab a couple of screws and insert those the other field radio when i took it apart it was actually the case that was broken the uh, sort of pink skin colored case bits of it had broken off and sheared off all over the place i'm guessing someone had dropped it at some point uh, so i uh, plastic welded all the pieces back together uh, and then uh, had to do a few little bits of soldering and otherwise there was not a lot wrong with it many sort of issues that we saw on the inside of this one so we're just doing the same sort of process and a, a bit of plastic welding on the case was all that it needed so those two screws are in place i'm sure that these stickers probably have a bit of stick left in them so i can just push those down we can then put the button back on as well at the front there then turn this over and put the back section on there is some elastic here which you just need to move out of the way and we can get that back piece on and again a couple of screws top and bottom and it should all fit nicely back together and then we can do a full test And here we go this is it all back together so i've uh, put the little cover on the top there that's just sort of elasticated on it's supposed to sort of cover it over when it's on the back of action man and walking around you have this sort of fake aerial thing that uh, flips up to make it look more like a radio there's also supposed to be a set of headphones that uh, sort of clip in so it looks like action man is listening to the radio uh, but let's test this if i press the button on the front now it should say all of the different phrases and they should come out randomly particularly random I have to say it's an old thing and it just uh, the the needle basically just falls into whichever track it's going to fall into so if you shake it a bit it might fall into some different ones oh, so different one there let's give it a bit of a shake see if that yeah it's a pretty good actually it's not too, not too bad considering how old these things are it works particularly well so uh, i do need to now find a couple of the other uh, records to go in this but i've got one working field radio fairly straightforward to actually get it working it's just a, a lot of little sort of mechanical pieces and working out which bits do what and there you go that is uh, both of the field radios up and running i have made some new straps for this one as well i've just used some flat five millimeter elastic i've sewn it onto the bottom there just sewing a loop and i've made a little loop at the top as well you can actually hook these in place so that these uh, now strap over action man's shoulders i still need to uh, find a original uh, little cover that should sort of flap over this but uh, for the moment this one works and it will still look good on display and actually on this one i have just restuck this sticker uh, sort of back onto it it was in good enough condition that i could actually just stick that back on but i have also made a set of uh, replacement stickers so if you do need those for your own field radio then go to toyploy.com and you can download them from there so there we go that is it we've now got both of these field radios up and running again it was a pretty interesting project because there's lots of little sort of moving mechanical parts and as you can see it was a fairly straightforward thing to do you just need to sort of study what's going on and there seem to be a few sort of weak areas we have weak solder joints on pieces uh, bits of metal get bent and then springs get compressed so you need to sort of uh, extend those and with luck everything should just start working again so i do need to say a massive thank you to simon who very kindly sent both of these in uh, it's a been a really fun project so thanks for sending those over if you've enjoyed this video then make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell to be notified each time i upload a new video and thanks for watching thanks for watching toy ploy subscribe for more great videos you can also follow toy ploy on twitter facebook and instagram